So um, our second speaker is uh, Salim Tayou, and um, he will talk about uh, distribution properties of Hodge and Tate Loci, I would say as an Italian, but maybe Loci in English. Oops. Yeah, I will pronounce it Loci for this talk if there are any opposition please no 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 problem i i i'm sorry i'm having some troubles with the um with my computer and with logging in okay. uh, please go ahead go ahead okay um okay thank you for the introduction and uh, for having me here at uh, the is it's uh, a great pleasure for me to be here um, so yeah, the title of my talk is uh, the distribution properties for Hodge and uh, Tate loci. Um, so first, I will start by defining what uh, what are the Hodge and Tate loci, and then in the final part, I will mention a brief application. So let's take n an integer greater or equal than one, and let's take x be a smooth projective algebraic variety of dimension n. Um, instead of defining what all these words mean, let me just give an example. Um, for example, take a polynomial, a non-constant homogeneous polynomial of degree d in n plus two variables, and uh, consider the locus where this polynomial vanishes in the projective space in n plus one of dimension n plus one. Well, this is what we call a hypersurface of degree d. It has dimension n. Uh, smoothness is related to p satisfying the Jacobian criterion, which somehow just been a complex manifold. And projective is just uh, uh, properly embedded in a projective space. Um, in, the, in this talk, I will be mostly interested in curves. So n equal one for surfaces, n equal two. Well, for n equal three, let's just call them higher dimensional variety, and I won't be talking them, about them a lot. So let's see what happens for algebraic curves. Let's take an algebraic curve, so n equal one. Um, as a topological space, it's only a Riemann surface. It has some genus G, which is an integer, a non-negative integer. Um, and so the topology is entirely given by this integer. It's uh, either a sphere when the genus is zero or a donut, a surface with a hole when the genus is one or when the genus is greater than two, it has G holes. Uh, so the genus can also be read in the, this cohomology group, which is also a topological uh, data. When it, it comes from the topological structure of the Riemann surface. This, this, uh, this group has dimension 2G and it's moreover endowed with a symplectic form. Uh, while the complex structure induces a Hodge filtration, uh, so this is a subspace uh, inside the H1, which is Lagrangian. And uh, one of the first success of the Hodge theory is the global theory theorem for curves, which tell us that the curves can entirely be recovered from this data, namely the, the, the H1 with its symplectic form and with the, the Hodge filtration on, on C. Like the, the curve can be recovered as a complex algebraic uh, variety. Okay, let's now see what happens for surfaces. Um, so I take an algebraic surface. Again, I would like to see uh, uh, what, what the, the data given by the topological structure on this algebraic surface for various reasons I'll be looking only for the H2, which is the second singular, uh, singular cohomology group. And um, the complex structure um, here induces a Hodge filtration on this H2, which has now uh, two steps. So there's an F2, a F1, and the whole space. Uh, one way to measure the interaction of these two uh, structures, we have a topological data, we have a complex structure, and we can measure the interaction by introducing the so-called the neuron severity group, which is a subgroup of the H2 of the classes which are which lies in the F1, so this uh, Second, first, second, uh, second, uh, first filtration. Uh, and in terms of Hodge decomposition, the Char um, cohomology class of type 1, 1, I mean, over C. It is a classical theorem of Lefschetz that this group, uh, the subgroup, is also generated by curve classes inside the H2. Uh, by curve, I mean really an algebraic curve drawn on, on the surface X. Let's give some examples. Um, I take now a smooth surface of degree D, and so inside the P3. Um, so if D equal one, uh, then the, this H2 in fact is entirely algebraic. Uh, and this is generated simply by a hyperplane section. 
uh, an effect, the, 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 the surface here is very simple. It's just a projected space in dimension two. For d equal two, uh, x is isomorphic to a product of two copies of p1. So this is a, a quadric. And again, the neuron severity uh, generates the whole h2. So the, the whole h2 is, is algebraic. And for d equal three, it is a classical theorem of the Italian school that x contains exactly 27 lines. And this, um, and again, the neuron severity uh, spans uh, the whole H2. So one might ask, does this happen for every surface or can we have some uh, interesting Hodge structures? So for example, what happens for D equal four, this is the case of quartix, and for D greater than five, the so-called general type surfaces. More generally, if you have a, a smooth projective variety of dimension N as in the beginning, uh, the topological data will be encoded in this singular cohomology group that we can attach to this variety. And the complex structure will induce a filtration called the Hodge filtration on uh, this H2K. Uh, this Hodge filtration starts from uh, the 2K vector spaces. And of course, the interaction between these two can be also measured by the so-called group of Hodge classes, which are elements in the integral cohomology group which are, which are of type, type KK. Of course, the analogous uh, result of, um, uh, of Lefschetz is the so-called Hodge conjecture, which predicts that this one is rationally linear combination of algebraic cycles, which is not known in general. But still, one can ask how this uh, rank behave if we deform X in family. In order to make this question more precise, I will focus on a specific example, which is a quartic in P3C. One can remark that this surface is simply connected. It has an holomorphic symplectic two form. Um, and one can make, in fact, a more general definition, which captures these two properties uh, and call it a K3 surface. Um, so this is a K3 surface is a smooth projective uh, geometry connected. So it means connected to algebraic closure and which has trivial H1 and trivial canonical bundles. A quartic, for example, is uh, a K3 surface. Um, well, some, some numerology for K3 surfaces, namely the H2 is a free abelian group of rank 22. The neuron severity as a subgroup is also free of rank of X, which is called the Picard number, which satisfies the bound uh, between one and 22, or I would assume all uh, the K3 surfaces are uh, projective. And um, in fact, over C, the bound we can achieve is 20, but over finite fields, we can have the bound 22, the so called super singular K3 surfaces. In fact, uh, if we imagine like the quartic defined by a polynomial equation, if we choose the coefficients of this polynomial equation very random, then the row of x will be just equal 1, while every value between 1 and 20 is obtained over, over C. Um, so yeah, let's go back to this question of how this Picard number, or this rank of Hodge classes vary in families, specifically in the context of K3 surfaces. So we take a family of uh, polarized K3 surfaces. By this, I mean, I have a variety S and for every little S in, in big S, the fiber is a K3 surface and L is a non-pole line bundle. Um, one can take, for example, of a family of quartics embedded in P3 of S and we vary the coefficients of the defining polynomial. Um, yeah, the basic question is how does this Picard rank varies as S varies in big S? For this, let's define the, the minimum value of this Picard rank and introduce the Noether Lefschetz locus, which is the set uh, of points in S uh, for which there is an extra algebraic class in this Picard group, meaning the, the, the rank is greater than its minimal value on the family. And we would like to understand the geometry of this locus. Well, some results. First, assume that this family is not isotrivial, meaning not all the fiber are isomorphic as algebraic varieties. Otherwise, this locus is trivial, is empty. Um, so it's a result that goes back at least to Max Noether and uh, Solomon Lefschetz that this, uh, it is a countable union of strict algebraic subvariety. Um, Butcher, Katsakov, uh, uh, and Ponte, Ponte and Schaeffer Baron proved in 98 that if S is projective, then this locus is non empty. And in 2003, 
for Gizu, proof that this focus is dense for the analytic topology. One, in fact, can refine this result in the following way. For simplicity, let's assume that S is a curve. Um, and let L be the Hodge line bundle on S, meaning the line bundle, which to every little S in S associates the section of uh, differentials, the second differentials on the fiber. Uh, consider a churn form with respect to a Hodge metric and consider the measure given by integration of this uh, churn form on S. And then my PhD, I proved that uh, this locus is equidistributed with respect, the noted locus is equidistributed in S with respect to this measure mu. So to give a precise meaning of the statement is requires to introduce the Poincaré duality, uh, I mean, the Poincaré form on the H2. And the parameter that goes to infinity here is the, we're taking an element in the H2, we're looking at its uh, value with respect to this quadratic form and we're cutting all the points for which there appear a Hodge class with a given value uh, with respect to this quadratic form. And this locus will be equidistributed. Um, okay, let me now move to some arithmetic aspects of this question. Now we'll talk a little bit about Tate Locker. So let's X be a K3 surface of our number field. And uh, for almost every prime ideal, we can reduce mod P and get a K3 surface of our finite field. Um, let's, let us denote X and this P, this reduction. Then we have an equality between the PK ranks. Um, so here I added a bar to mean that we go to an algebraic closure of K on the left-hand side and the finite field on the right-hand side. Uh, and we always have an equality, an inequality like this. Um, we can denote by analogy an L the set of primes where this inequality is strict. And the question asked by Francois Char is what, what can we say about this locus NL? For example, is it non-empty? Is it in infinite? Um, just a small remark um, to explain the, the terminology Tate loci is that the Muffer Tate conjecture predicts, I mean, implies in this situation, it's known that the whole fix is the rank of invariance under Galois action on this uh, second et al. cohomology group. So this can be thought as an analog of um, a BT cohomology in over C, but I won't define it here. Uh, and the Tate conjecture, on the other hand, predicts that the rank of the reduction is uh, equal to the rank of invariance under the Frobenius at the prime at which to reduce. And so in some sense, we're also looking at some, yeah, the, the Tate loci um, by analogy to Hodge loci. Um, so in this direction, we have a theorem with my collaborators, Anat Shankar, Aru Shankar, and Yu Chin Tang, where we prove that if the K3 surface has everywhere good reduction, then this locus is uh, infinite. In fact, the methods that we use yields also other jumper results, for example, for two-dimensional abelian scheme over uh, OK, which is the ring on integer of K. Um, then we prove that there are infinitely many places such that when you reduce this abelian scheme, we get an abelian surface, which is geometrically not simple. Meaning when you go to algebraic closure, it is isogenous to a product of elliptic curves. Um, Finally, let me mention an application uh, of this result. So for specifically for K3 surfaces, so K3 surfaces have a special role in terms of classification of smooth algebraic surfaces in terms of they have a Kodaira dimension zero. And there is a classical conjecture that predicts that a K3 surface of an algebraically closed field contains infinitely many uh, rational curves. As a byproduct of uh, our, uh, our theorem, we proved that if a K2 surface has um, a model over a number field with every work of reduction, well, we have the alternative, either X contains infinitely many rational curve or X has infinitely many unirational reductions, uh, in particular, super singular reductions. Here, unirational means that it is dominated by P2, the projective space, something that cannot happen in characteristic zero. And super singular in particular means that the PK rank is maximal, it's 22. So the jump happens at the maximal level. Um, okay, so that's all what I wanted to say and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions?
Can you say a few words about the proof? Uh, of which one? E equidistribution theorem. So the, the equidistribution theorem is obtained by, um, we have a, a, a parallel transport map, a local Hodge theory, which reduces uh, this equidistribution problem to an equidistribution problem of the image of this parallel transport map in some homogeneous space. And um, in this homogeneous space, we use general results of Ratner theory to prove equidistribution. In fact, for quadrics, it's even easier than that. It's classical result from um, uh, the 20s and 30s on uh, um, equidistribution of uh, lattice points in quadrics. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Which theorem of yours is closest to Elke's? Uh, the, um, the, the last one, which, is, which concerns the jumps, uh, super singular ones. So mm -hmm. Elkis theorem says that if we take an elliptic curve of, our, uh, of a Q, say for simplicity, there are infinitely many places where uh, the reduction is uh, super singular. Uh, yeah. Uh, here we have an alternative. We don't really get, a, um, I mean, we don't uh, have an exact analog of Elkis theorem. No, no, are you using anything like his proof? No, no, we are not using anything like his proof, no. Mm. Do you have a lot of examples of, uh, of K3 services or other services that have everywhere good reduction? I mean, it seems like a very strong assumption, right? So we, um, we allow extension of uh, the field, like the, the number field, we, we can allow to have an extension of the number field. Um, actually, yeah, I, we believe that this can be removed and uh, it just uh, it just the method we have seen requires some further uh, technical work, but uh, we believe that it's not a, a crucial assumption that, that can be removed to obtain for any K3 surface. Actually, here at this level, I should mention that uh, the, the analogous there's analogous results uh, proved by Francois Charles for two elliptic curves. If you take two elliptic curves over a number of fields, then there are infinitely many primes where they are geometrically isogenous and uh, there is no assumption of the good reduction of these elliptic curves. So we expect that also uh, such results should hold for K3 surfaces. Okay, um, thanks again.